Hi, I'm Dorian, the founder of Drone Desk. Thanks for checking out our quick demo. So I'm just going to log into the system and show you some of the, the basic configuration stuff and then a job workflow so you can understand the, the core functionality. So this is the dashboard that you presented with when you first log in, which gives you a summary of all the records you've got in the system. It gives you a view of your flight currency and so on for you and all your pilots. If you're the admin, you can record certifications in the system, both at individual and business level. Um, this will track those for you and let you know when they're up for renewal. Then we've got the calendar and that'll show you all the jobs that you've got scheduled in the system with quick links to go and manage those jobs. Below that we've got the to-do list which you can use as your own to-do list if you want to but anything with the red bell icon is system generated so that'll be stuff that needs your attention so the system's constantly monitoring of things going on and will point you towards things that um, you need to take care of so we've got jobs of quote overdue, uh, jobs past next action date, that kind of stuff. In terms, uh, I'll just mention the uh, bell icon here so this in the UK uh, we'll present um, CAA Skywise notifications, so as soon as those come out, we uh, we notify them here for you. So that saves you scheduling um, or subscribing to their email list. In the US, you'll get TFR notifications, so um, they're all bang up to date. In terms of configuration, there's a bunch of stuff, so you can connect your Altitude Angel account or your Drone Assist account. Um, you can also connect your DJI account uh, so that we can auto-sync your flight logs into the system. If you've got data in other systems, you can import that. Um, so you just download the template file and then upload. A job within Drone Desk is managed in a single screen. So the screen gives you everything that you need to manage the job end to end. And it's broken down into the, the sections of what you, we allow you to do uh, for six different um, job classes is set up a configuration to determine which of those sections are shown on screen or are included in any of the three PDF job exports that you're able to generate from the system. So we give you complete configuration options over the, over all that view, the screen view and the PDF exports. For those PDF exports, you can set up a document header um, so that you know it's got your brand on the first page and then the job detail below that. If you use method statements, you can set a default method statement that gets added to every new job if you choose it to, and then you can modify that on a per job basis uh, as you need to. Uh, operational notes is the same. Then we've got risk assessment. So we have three different flavors of risk assessment, standard PDRA01 if you're in the UK and OSC. And you can pre-configure multiple different versions of, of, of uh, risk assessments as you can see here. You can, if you want to, pre-configure the um, risk scores um, and they're based on this standard five by five risk matrix. So, you know, setting the score is as simple as selecting the score there. Then we've got checklists, so we give you seven different checklists, and again, these are all entirely configurable by you. You can um, set these up as you want them, uh, and again, they get added to every job when you um, create a job. So just to run through a workflow, typically the starting point would be a location, and you can create that by multiple different means. Uh, so let's just give it a name. You can enter what three words to address, postcode, lat long, easting, northing. You can uh, do an address search. You can pan and zoom on the map, so let's just do that just by way of demo. Uh, so all I've done there is just double click on the map, it's dropped a pin with that location with a uh, 30, 50, 150 meter radius around that. Uh, just give you an idea of clearances and you can see we've got some ground hazard information here, so rail network. So all these uh, ground and air hazard uh, data come in from Altitude Angel, so it's exactly the same stuff as you see in Drone Assist. You'll also notice that uh, Drone Desk has filled in all the other fields for me, so you know I don't have to go hunting for the airspace class or the grid reference elevation and so on, it's all done uh, done for me so we'll save that as our new location um, it's got to be unique unique name so let's try again with two okay so for that location i'm now going to create a new job uh, you can set the system up to create sequential job references if you want to uh, we'll set the job class to standard the job type let's say we're going to do a roof inspection uh, i'll set myself as the client the location we've already got. I'll select the pilot and the drone that's going to be used. We give you a view of the weather forecast for the coming 10 days with the rag status for uh, KP index, wind speed, uh, chance of rain, temperature, and so on. So we'll say we can do this tomorrow. Uh, Midday-ish. Um, we'll select the appropriate risk assessment here. So these are all the pre-configured risk assessments. So I'll select the standard one um, and we'll go and manage that job. I'll mention clone job while I'm here. That enables you to create an exact copy of a previous job that you've done copy with all your notes and maps and everything copied across. So it's just a really quick way of creating a revisit.
So we'll dive into Manage Job. As I mentioned earlier, this uh, screen enables you to manage every aspect of the job end to end without having to go anywhere else for any other data or any other information. Broken down into sections, pre-deployment, on-site, post-flight, uh, and so on. So job details uh, just gives you a view of the uh, client, the job details, uh, the pilot and which drone is going to be used. You can optionally mark these sections as complete. And all that does is change the icon color to green. So as soon as you access the job, you know which sections have been completed and which haven't. Initial survey. Uh, so this just gives you space to record uh, your desktop observations about the site. So are there any like likely to be any site access issues, building problems, livestock, that kind of stuff. Um, none of these fields are mandatory. It's up to you how much detail you fill in. Um, and you can set a default text to be uh, place all the text to be put in there if you wanted to. Notifications is the next section that allows you to record notifications. So if you're notifying police or the landowner or neighbours or anybody else about this flight uh, or air traffic control centre, for example, then you can um, record that notification here so that you know or anybody view reviewing this job will know at any point in time who has been notified and when they were notified and so on. And you can obviously add as many rows in here as you need to. Emergency contacts, that gives you information about the nearest hospital, um, local police service, contact information of various other emergency contact numbers. Then we've got the method statement. So it's pulled in that method statement that I'd set up previously, um, and I can now modify that as I need to for this specific job. Flyway airspace users, this will calculate the flyway radius of the drone that you selected for the job. And within that radius, we'll identify any other airspace users. So the principle being, if you get a flyway, then you can um, figure out which direction your drone is going in, uh, select the appropriate heading. So let's say it's going north. And then we give you contact information for all of the airspace users in that bearing. And that will include everything from airports to race courses with helipads, hotels with helipads, that kind of stuff. So uh, all that work is done for you. Then we come to NOTAMs. So we pull in NOTAMs every half hour. Uh, throughout the day uh, and we will show you any NOTAM that is active on the day that you said you're going to be flying and either intersects with or is within the flyaway radius of your location. So um, you can review these by clicking on the map. They are listed textually below and you can review them um, on the map there if you want to. So you can click on these, review them. If they're not relevant, then you can uh, click the crossed out eye icon and remove them from the map for you. Um, just so you can get down to the ones that are going to be relevant. Uh, so that's no terms. If there's any text in, in these no terms that doesn't make any sense to you, so um, you'll find abbreviations here quite often. Uh, so just by way of example, uh, there's a lookup that will help you translate. Uh, so that's no terms. Um, then we've got the weather forecast. So um, we'll show you an hourly forecast, and again, with a rag status relative to the capability of the drone that you've selected for the job. Um, and you can it's a full 24 hour forecast so if you're flying in the evening you can expand that row and view that we will get a metar and taf if we're able to for that location um, and we also give you an option to view the windy.com forecast um, so there's kind of three flavors of forecast that you can use there then we've got the um, site plan so this map contains multiple layers of data if i zoom out You'll see we've got all the ground hazards. We've got um, uh, DJI's, Geozones, uh, and pretty much everything else that you'd want to know about. Uh, triple SIs, uh, RSPB areas, and so on. Um, so what you can do with this map is um, uh, map out what you're intending to do on site. So typically, you'd create a site plan. So I just can't find where I'm going. Um, so it looks like, yeah, we're, the, we're within a micro light site, so you might want to contact them just let them know that, that you're going to be flying just to demonstrate the tools available here so if we're doing a um, survey of let's say this field you could map out the area indicate where your takeoff and landing point is going to be uh, indicate where the pilots can be located if you're taking safety marshals indicate where they're going to be uh, if you've notified people you can indicate that um, you can even if you want to um, map out your um, flight path, intended flight path um, you can add a note, editable, and so on. And so that's the site plan. You can import KML. You can export this map as a snapshot or as a KML if you want to. Uh, there's also a 3D view if you're um, in a city, uh, just to give you an idea of building heights and so on. Um, then you can publish your flights up to Altitude Angel, so up to Drone Assist, uh, with a click of a button. That'll push your flight area that you've just defined up to Altitude Angel, so you can review that in the system. Anybody else using Drone Assist will now be able to see that there's a flight going on that location on that date. Uh, so there we are. And it's anonymous, just your date and time of flight. Uh, 
I'll cancel that because we're not actually going to be flying that day. And you can cancel and republish as many times as you like. Checklists um, all look similar to this. So you can uh, obviously go through and mark stuff off as you do it. Uh, these are tri-state as well. So they're either unchecked, checked, or uh, click it again. It'll go gray, which is not applicable. And then the icon will go amber uh, and green once you've marked everything off. Risk assessment. So it'll pull in that risk assessment that I predefined and pre-selected. I can now go through and uh, amend, uh, select the appropriate risks for all these. And then at the end, I'll get an overall risk score to let me know whether or not it's going to be good to fly or not. Then we further checklists and then we've got flight logging. So you can either log flights manually. So just click in the field and set your start and end time. You can click a button when you take off, click a land button when you land, and that'll timestamp that for you. Or you can uh, use this option which is to sync with DJI if you're flying DJI drones uh, so clicking that <clears throat> will pull in any flight logs for this location this date process them for you and map them out on the on the map uh, you can also import logs directly um, from your device DJI Pirate Zag um, or from any of these applications and all those uh, flight logs feed into your uh, flight log reporting uh, we've got a closure report with a incident log <clears throat> so if something happens, if your drone falls out of the sky or hits a tree or whatever, you can record instance within the system. Uh, so that's a job end to end. And you can export that as a job pack RAMS or custom from here to a PDF uh, file, should you need to. Uh, and then reporting wise, we've got uh, an instant log report. We've got a flight log report. Uh, so you can pull flight logs by um, pilot, by drone if you want to, or all drones by a spe specified date range. Um, and exporting to PDF will give you CAA compliant PDF export um, or to excel will give you all the data that we have there's also a maintenance log report so just select your drone you can export a, a maintenance log as well at any point in time uh, so that's a very quick counter through the main bits of drone desk i hope that's proved useful if you've got any other questions please reach out get in touch uh, it's dorian at dronedesk.io or via the website dronedesk.io thanks for watching um, hope to welcome you on board soon